In this example, we will run some MATLAB code for communication system up conversion and down conversion. The example code is following chapter 5 of the book Software Receiver Design. So the first example is called amlarge.m and this transcript gives us an example for up conversion using, using uh, the uh, large carrier AM, that is the amplitude modulation with carrier, we adding another carrier at the transmitter site. So the signal is sampled um, with the, the end time 0 0.33 seconds. Sampling period is uh, 1 over 10,000. So we generate a time vector. And then here, FC 1000, it's 1000, that, that is the carrier frequency. So C is the carrier of cosine 2 pi FCT. FM is used for generating the message code, message signal. So message signal W is 10 over length of T times 1 over length of T. And adding a cosine signal 2 pi F sub M T. So that is a, a function, a cosine function, adding a linear increasing function. So it's a cosine function ramp up then this uh, cosine function has a much smaller frequency, fm, 20 hertz, smaller than the carrier frequency of 1000. v is the modulated signal, or the up-converted signal, that is c, the carrier cosine dot product, times my message signal w, and then add c. We need to add this carrier in my transmitter signal. Then FBE is a low-pass filter. Low-pass filter with a damp 1100 and its cutoff frequency 0 0.05, rolling down all the way to frequency 0 0.1, and then the stop band is at 0 0.1 to 1 of the sampling frequency. Okay. B is the filter, filtering this low-pass filter, the fil filter coefficient of low-pass filter. And then the envelope, Envelope is we apply a filter, filter with coefficient b, so that is a low pass filter, uh, with the absolute value of v. v is the received signal, that is the, excuse me, the up converted signal v. Absolute value, we're only looking at its, uh, its amplitude. And then we use a low pass filter. The effect is that we take the envelope because the high frequency component, the high frequency sine wave, will be smoothed out. We only get a low frequency envelope of the signal. This effect will be shown clearly in the pictures. So we generate uh, some figures. Let's look at the pictures that we have. So here is my um, signal. The first picture, top picture is the message signal, message signal of W. So it's a slow changing sine wave adding a linear function, so it's increasing. The second picture, picture B, is the carrier frequency. So that's a cosine signal, cosine function with frequency 1000 hertz. Picture C is the up-converted signal. So we see that is the first message signal. Then we have this, uh, um, this cosine function, this uh, frequency of 1000 cosine function that is modi modulated on my original message signal. Now because I'm adding <coughs> adding a, a cosine and then the original message is the, when we design it it's greater than or equal to negative one. Then you're adding another one times cosine therefore everything here the, the message envelope will be beyond zero. Then picture D, figure D is that after the low pass filter the high frequency carrier has been smoothed out. We only have the carrier, which is the profile of this function. That looks exactly the same as my original signal. But well, instead, of course, you have adding one because you're adding the AM's carrier on it. Figure two is another plot of the original message signal, which is this red curve or the blue curve. By adding the yellow, it shows red. The red curve here, that's my original message signal W. And then this yellow one is the modulated or the up-converted signal. We have a very dense sine wave 
in this profile. Actually, if you zoom in, those are the sign, sign fluctuations here, cosine fluctuation here. Then the black one, black one is the resulting signal that is after low pass filtering, I am uh, taking the envelope of the uh, original signal. It's not sure exact, but this this black one, uh, this black message is exactly on top of this red one, and that is one beyond this, uh, on top of this yellow modulated signal, and then just one beyond this original message signal, which is showing red here. The reason it's a little bit offset because I'm doing a filtering. So you filtering, you have you have here at the beginning of this filtering, you got a few of those, the length of the coefficients. So if you subtract that, it should land exactly onto my original signal. Here is a zoom in the version uh, at the very beginning. Probably the yellow modulated is not show very clearly, but these are the these are the modulated uh, signal. And the red one is my original message signal. And then this black curve is the envelope. And uh, as I said, at the very beginning, at the very beginning is due to the filter effect. So you need to subtract these. And then this black one will be land exactly on top of the yellow modulated signal. That's the envelope of my modulated signal. Let's look at the spectrum of all these signals. Looking in the frequency domain. So. Let me plot figure another figure um, plot spec of the original message signal that is W with sampling period T sub S. So here is the message signal. We can see it's a sine wave. It's kind of uh, 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 moving upwards. It's a sine wave because it's sine sine cosine function ad adding the linear increasing function. The bottom picture shows the frequency spectrum. So that is indeed a very low frequency. It's around frequency at zero. And then let's see the carrier. So this is the carrier C. Carrier frequency from the time domain, it's a very dense cosine function with a carrier frequency of 1000 hertz. So the bottom picture is showing those two spikes at negative 1000 and positive 1000 hertz. And then let's look at the modulated signal, V. Modulated signal is the message signal and multiply by this uh, a dense cosine with frequency 1000 hertz. So it is modulated signal, looks like that in the time domain. The bottom picture shows very clearly we have the original signal message, message signal around DC and then it will, it's being modulated onto frequency 1000 hertz and another copy at negative 1000 hertz. Then we plot out the final envelope of V. There you go. So it's show here the envelope is that the signal V path through a low pass filter. So we only have this very smooth variation that is the envelope of my modulated signal show in the top picture with the beginning. At the beginning is here is the, the where here at the beginning is the, the filter effect. And then the bottom picture shows the frequency domain. Indeed, we have we have bring that, we kind of doing the down conversion, bring the carrier frequency signal back to DC. And we're only looking at a, a very low frequency DC part of the uh, of the message signal. In the second example, we use MATLAB code to work the suppressed carrier EM. So here, um, the signal, the message signal is defined as before, but the modulated signal on line 6 is V equal to C multiplied by W. And we do not have an add C term. So this is only multiplied by the carrier signal of C as the cosine 2 pi FCT. And that is the suppressed carrier. We do not have a carrier add-on to the transmitter signal. So at the receiver side, instead of doing a very simple envelope detection, we need to know exactly what is the carrier frequency, what is the carrier signal, and then multiply that to do the demodulation or down conversion, bring the signal back to DC. So at the receiver side, we have a, another cosine 
function here for demodulation or for down conversion. Um, so we have this cosine function is uh, with the frequency fc, but fc will have a will have a offset. That's the carry offset gamma. Offset that's carry offset is always there in practice, but in this ideal case, let's set, set gamma equal to zero. And then we have this phase, a random phase. That's due to the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. So you can think of that's a that's an exponential function or cosine function. It's rotating between zero and two pi, and uh, it may land. It may not land exactly at z zero when the receiver side. So you have this random phase offset. Now suppose we have already compensate with that. So phi is also zero. So that's an ideal case. Then we do demodulation. So we have the modulated signal multiplied by c two. Given that. I know exactly the carrier at the receiver side. Not only that, I need to compensate with the carrier frequency offset, compensate with the carrier phase offset. Okay, we got the demodulated receive signal of X. Then doing the same thing, we go through a low pass filter. Low pass filter designed F using F coefficient of F1. And F, F1 is in this uh, uh, the low pass filter of frequency 100 hertz. FBE is the coefficient of these damps. Damps at the position of the values 1, 1, 0, 0 at the frequency positions 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1 of the Nyquist frequency. And then uh, we have the mod, the M is the demodulated signal that passed through the low pass filter. Okay, then we plot out this output. Okay, here we go. The top picture is my original message signal. That's the same as before. Uh, figure B is the message after modulation. So we see that this is the signal, that's the cosine function, that's increasing cosine function, multiplied by this high frequency cosine of 1000 Hertz. It's modulated here. And because that my original signal has positive and negative values, and I only multiply by cosine, I'm not adding another cosine term, therefore the modulated signal will be positive, both positive and negative. And actually, if you look at this envelope, it sometimes will go beneath the zero. So I will not be able to use a simple envelope detector to get this original signal. Otherwise, it will, it will show it will give me ambiguity. I don't know where I should take this envelope or the negative part. Then picture C is showing the demodulated signal. Now, that demodulated signal is because I know exactly what the carrier frequency is. So I need to multiply the same cosine function of FC at the receiver side. So this modulated signal, you can think that as V times C2, which is my original signal, W, times cosine 2 pi fct, and then times again cosine 2 pi fct at the receiver side. So it's my message signal times square of cosine 2 pi fct. So the square of that cosine 2 pi fct is, <clears throat> we only have a positive part. And then you're onto the original message signal and you end up with something like this. Okay, this is demodulated the signal. Then this demodulated the signal go through a low pass filter that will give me the low variations which will cover the original message signal. And again, the beginning, the head is the filter if, filter effects. So you need to remove those parts and then shift it this left a little bit that will exactly equal to the message signal. If I have this uh, perfect ideal case with, with gamma equal to zero, phi equal to zero, no frequency offset, no carry offset. No, no carrier phase offset. Now let's look at the spectrums. So first look at the uh, original message signal. Here, that's the same. The message signal is uh, an increasing sine wave with frequency, low frequency of 20 hertz. So we see the bottom picture is showing the magnitude of the frequency is uh, around uh, DC. Its span is about 20 hertz. And then showing here is the, the carrier. Uh, so here's the carrier frequency. 
with a cosine of 1000 1, hertz. They have two spikes at 1000 hertz and a negative 1000 hertz in the frequency domain. Here is the modulated signal. So modulated signal, in this case, I'm only multiplied by this cosine of 1000 hertz, cosine 2 pi FCT. And uh, then the top picture shows the modulated signal, and the bottom picture shows its spectrum. Now top picture is I have this envelope, but because I mod modulated the cosine function only, there's some ambiguity. Actually, the envelope, the original message show, this time it goes beneath zero. And then we have this envelope that was increasing signal. Let's plot the uh, modulate, demodulated signal. Here's the demodulated signal. Demodulated signal is that we multiply by another cosine 2 pi FCT. Suppose we know FC at the receiver site. And uh, then the top picture is showing the time domain signal. The bottom part is the spectrum. So clearly we got demodulated, so we bring the 1000 hertz signal back to DC, back to DC. But because you're multiplying by cosine 2 pi FCT, you're throwing out another copy to twice the carrier, so at 2000 hertz, and another one copy at negative 2000 hertz. Then after low pass filter, this is the final one. The low pass filter is we, again, we take only the DC components. The, the, I mean the, the, the signal, the low frequency components around DC and the higher frequency of 2000 Hertz, negative 2000 Hertz will be filtered out. So we get this signal uh, M that looks like the original message signal W. Now let's see if I have a carrier offset at the receiver side. So gamma, instead of 0, I'm changing that to 5 here. 5 compared with 1000 carrier frequency. So I have a little carrier offset. Um, I exaggerate a little bit in order to show the result. So here, FC plus gamma. So at the receiver side, I thought I have a 1000 hertz carrier. But indeed, I'm using 1005 hertz to do the demodulation. Then run that. Uh, we will see F1. So here is picture C. Figure C is the modulated signal. It has already got some of those uh, effects because of my carry offset. And then uh, figure D, we do the low pass filter, uh, getting the low pass filter of the demodulated signal. We see that this message signal M. This is quite different from my original signal, message signal, which is the increasing sine function. So let's use this picture to see. I plot the both time domain and the frequency domain of my final received signal of M, a low pass filter output. And we see this is the M signal. It's um, very different from the original increasing sine wave. Indeed, in the magnitude, that's the frequency, it's not exactly centered at zero. Now, let me zoom in on that. Zoom in on that. We will have a, we, we actually have two peaks. One is around 5 hertz, one around negative 5 hertz, because I have a carry offset. Carry offset about 5 hertz. So when you down convert it, it's not back to DC, it will back to your offset. Next, let's look at an example of a quadrature amplitude modulation. Let's do a 16 quantum. So here I have the symbol string has two parts. S real, that's random integer from 1 to 4 with the size 100 times 1, so that's a vector of 100. I have S imaginary, that is integer number from 1 to 4 of size 100. Then a little bit a numerical process. So have S real subtract 2.5 times 2. That will give me a number negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, or positive 3. Similarly, I do that for S imaginary. Combine these two parts form a complex number, S. So the S is a, is a stream of symbols that has a, a, the, the complex value 
each of the real part and imaginary part will take the value out of uh, negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, and positive 3. So figure 1 is to plot uh, this simple stream on the complex plane. So that will going to show me that going to show me the uh, constellation. So here's the constellation of 16 quam. We have those 16 points perfectly, those landing on those positions. And uh, we know each point represents four different binary bits, four bits. Then I'm going to do the post shaping on this symbol to generate a waveform, a DC waveform. Now this, this shaping pose, what I choose is a sync function. So here, H is a sync of 10T, we center that, so T subtract T over 2. 10T, and uh, when I want to do the convolution with the sync function, with my original symbol, um, what I did here is I have uh, um, padding original symbols with uh, two consecutive symbols with padding nine zeros in between, and then convolved with my sync function because the sync function is 10t. And then I will plot, uh, first I plot this sync function, then do the convolution, then I'm going to plot this uh, signal. The signal is post shape going, going through the post shaping filter. To see the process of this post shaping, let's give an example. If I have a S real that takes two um, simple, simple point as one and negative one, and my post shaping filter is a sync function, sync function of 10t, therefore it's actually we have uh, oversampled here. We got from 0, 1, and uh, this 0 crossing appears at 10, and another 0 crossing at 20, and 30, 40, also here at negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, I have a 0 crossing for the sync function. Now if I convolve my original signal with the sync, what I want to do is I want to convolve the first, first symbol 1 is uh, taking this black curve of sync function. The second value of negative 1, what I want to do is I want to multiply by and uh, generate this blue sync function, it's negative 1, such that this value here is exactly aligned with the zero crossing of the first sync function. Similarly, this first data here, positive 1, is also the zero crossing of the second sync function. And uh, then I can have a very nice uh, waveform if I can sample exactly on this point, I will be able to, uh, I can get all these correct symbols. So that's why I need to pad nine zeros in between those two consecutive numbers of my original data. It's, this is counting zero, this is counting number 10, so that will have nine numbers in between. And that's how I do the, how I do uh, the, the sync, sync post shaping pose as a sync function. Now at the receiver side, the best we can do is if I know the post shaping filter is a sync function, and I use that to convolve with the received signal, so I'm doing a matched filtering, so I have this sync, and map onto that and slide this. And that, if I align here, that will give me a largest number. If I cross here, the line here, that will give me a negative 1. In this case, because I have a lot of zero crossings for my transmitter signal, another way is doing the sampling. If I can do a very good job of symbol sync, meaning that I know exactly where this point is, this is the best sampling point, so what I can do is I can sample here, 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 at those points. At those points. Of course, I'm sampling on the combined signal. That will give me at time zero, relatively zero, that will give me exactly the positive one. If I sample here with all the other s symbols that are zero crossing, and I only have a value which should show me negative one. If I can do that at the receiver with a perfect symbol sync, I can also uh, re uh, recover the symbols of S, S real in this case. Now, of course, if you can use the MATLAB uh, function filter 
and you can also using the filter function to work on the original symbol stream one negative one and you don't need to pad in any zeros and can filter that with your with your uh, with your post shaping filter that will give you exactly the uh, the result for the up convert for the up conversion uh, we know this because this is a QAM and I can use two messages M1 and M2 one is up converted with cosine 2 pi FCT and the other message stream is modulated with sine 2 pi FCT cosine and sine they are talking to each other so you're adding those two signals together you're adding those two signals and, and transmit it out M1 and M2 should be able to recover individually at the receiver site without any interference from the other and in our case M1 and M2 is S real and S imaginary we have already put that into this complex number S is M1 is real part plus J M2 therefore when I do this uh, up conversion what I can do is S S of T S multiplied by exponential e to the power j 2 pi fct and using that i actually consider both cosine and the sine of those two carrier functions carrier carriers and then uh, combine together give me this complex carrier let's look at the example output um, figure two is the sync function that is the sync function as my post shaping filter Figure three. Figure three shows the output of my post shaping filter, and I only need the middle middle portion because the both ends are the 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 effects of my doing the convolution, or you think that as a as a filter effects. So I want to cut that off and only take the middle part. What I did here is I have a I have the line number twenty nine. This line is just give me the middle portion of the of the, the, the signal waveform. So that's plotted in figure 4. Figure 4 is real part, imaginary part. This is the signal signal waveform that it will be transmitted, that will be up converted to carrier and be transmitted. Here we can see the output of the fil post shaping filter has a very smooth look compared with the original data stream. That, sh that should be positive 1, negative 1, positive 3, negative 3. It's a sharp transition. The reason being that, well, I'm going through a, a sync pose. In frequency, that is a rectangular box. So in frequency, I'm doing a filtering. It, is, it looks like a low-pass filter. So I smooth out the signal and I make my signal transferable into a real medium. Right? So the effect here is I'm, I'm doing this filtering, a low-pass filtering. That is my post-shaping filtering and give me this smooth look and waveform. Then I convert up convert that onto a frequency the carrier frequency is 1000 hertz so the transmit signal is my baseband signal waveform x multiplied by this carrier this is a complex carrier so it's exponential e to the power j 2 pi fct at the receiver side for this uh, complex carrier and then I need to bring it down to DC I take the signal Tx multiplied by exponential negative j 2 pi fct now at the receiver side I may have carry offset which indicated here is gamma I may also have the phase offset indicated here as phi um, let's look at a perfect, exam perfect case when gamma equal to 0 and phi equals to 0 Figure 5 plot out the received signal, the real part and the imaginary part. So here is my received signal. We can see we got exactly the same waveform that is down converted at DC. Down converted at DC, real part and imaginary part. Um, figure 6 is uh, after I do the sampling, I pick up the best sampling position of each symbol uh, because I'm doing the sync with zero crossing of each, in the, of each consecutive symbols so I've sampled that uh, 
if I can pick up the best position, position number one, and then I know the step size is 10, I take another one at 11, and so on and so forth. Figure four, figure six, that will give me the final constellation. So that's constellation is the received constellation. In this case, it's perfect. We got those six, 16 positions perfectly aligned. That should be my constellation for the recognizable symbols. Now let's look at some uh, imperfect cases. If I have a real channel, um, real system at the, we have a face, the carrier face, instead of uh, zero, I have a carrier face of uh, pi over four, pi over four. So, so the entire constellation will rotate by 45 degree. Let's see here, let's run that. Indeed, here we go. That's the picture of the constellation. The constellation is those 16 points, however, it will, it will rotate 45 degree. Now that really gives me some problem because when you do the detection, it's difficult to set a boundary, right? I really want to set a boundary so I can take each one. I, I just look at the real part and imaginary part, knowing if that is one part of one negative one or part of negative three. But if you rotate it, that just mess everything up. I do not know how to read the symbol as bits. Um, similarly, if I have some other other channel effect, let's say the gamma, it take a gamma equal to two. So I have a carry offset. And let me just recover this face equal to zero. And run that. So here's the result. That's the result because I have this carry offset. So the constellation is rotating. It's rotating. It show me those circles. Again, that is difficult for me to detect the symbols. I do not know which area according to the original picture. Here, I do not, do not know which area it belongs to. And I will not be able to correctly detect the bits out of these constellation points. And then we will have noise in real channel. So let me uh, make the receiver side perfectly with without any offset, carry offset, base offset. So gamma equal to zero, phi equal to zero. However, I have a noise added. I add a noise onto the modulated signal. So Tx, Tx equal to Tx plus a random Gaussian noise. And uh, that is complex random Gaussian noise. So I have a uh, random n size of Tx plus uh, j times random n size of x and make it smaller, so divide by 5. So it is a noisy signal, a noisy signal. Then what I can see here, this is the final result of my uh, demodulated received signal. Um, even though I don't have any carrier, um, carrier offset issues, face offset issues, but because of noise, Instead of one point, I have a blurry group of those points around the constellation point, 16 of those points. Now, if my noise SNI is very low, such that my noise is comparable to the signal itself, let's see here. And then I have a very blurry picture, and uh, these received uh, symbols are cross boundary. So again, I will not be able to detect, correctly detect the four binary bits out of each symbol.